is the most commonly used means of transport. It is our noblest invention, complex by design, simple by nature. The humble bicycle. A bicycle, popularly known as a bike, sometimes referred to as a push bike, pedal bike, pedal cycle, or just cycle. A bicycle is a human-powered, pedal-driven, single-track vehicle having two wheels attached to a frame, one behind the other, propelled by paddles and steered with handlebars attached to the front wheel. Once you get hooked to the activity as such, it is very, very, uh, it is a demanding activity. It is a very difficult thing to cycle 100, 100 kgs in a day, 50 kgs in a day. But, you know, it is so addictive that once you get hooked to it, it's really, really tough to get out. <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever happens, early morning, 6 o'clock, 5.30, you wake up and you go out for your ride. Although controversial, it is said that the earliest bicycle designs are drawings by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1490s. The first contraption that can realistically be said resembles a bicycle was constructed around 1790 by Comte de Sivrac of France. Called a clarifer, it was a wooden scooter-like device with no pedals or steel. In the late 1820s, German-born Karl Dreis von Sauerbrunn invented the improved two-wheel version of the clarifer, called the Lauf machine, a German word for running machine. The steerable Lauf machine was made entirely of wood and had no pedals, a rider would push his feet against the ground to make the machine go forward. In 1871, a British engineer, James Starley, designed the first fully functional bicycle called the Penny Farthing or commonly called as the High Bike. It was the first really efficient bike with pedals, steering and brakes. By the mid-1890s, British inventor John Kemp designed the first safety bicycle called the Rover Safety Bike. It had a steerable front wheel, two equally sized wheels, and a chain driving the rear wheel. And so the first modern bicycle was born. It's only taken 200 years, 200 years of innovation and invention. Today, the total number of bikes in the world is estimated around 1.5 billion, of which around 600 million are in China itself. By 2014, the number of bikes produced annually will exceed up to 150 million. Comparing it with the automobile production, bicycle production has doubled since 1965. Today, China, India, the European Union, Taiwan and Japan are responsible for 87% of global production, of which China alone has some 58% of the global market, whereas the Netherlands has the highest man-to-bike ratio. This year we went to bike shows. One was Eurobike in Germany and the other one was the Thai Pai bike show in Taiwan. So I learned a lot of exactly what is happening internationally about cycling. I learned a lot about how many companies are there in existence. The industry is about 1200 billion dollars. About 2500 companies operate and uh, sell their wares on the international markets. India as such is really tiny. The overall demand outside is so big because producers are not in India. Mm. And the market is also not in India. Uh, most of the cities, I mean in Europe for example, in a, in a local family, in a very very basic middle class family, you will see one car and four cycles. Mm. In Italy this year, <laughs> 2011-2012 financial year, the number of cars sold were less than the number of cycles. Mm. Okay, now with these proportions, you can imagine the number of cyclists who use to change to race. So it's insane outside India. Outside India, the bicycle culture has evolved to a point where cycling is more than just traveling from point A to B. 
more number of people are involved in this activity for the sake of sports, entertainment, health and leisure as compared to the Indian society where still majority of the crowd uses it just as a means of transport or work related issues. Uh, I'm Alain, I'm from France and I started a world tour six months ago. So uh, I'm, I will be on the road for two years, I think. Uh, so I, think I started in France, I crossed uh, mainly Eastern Europe, all the, I crossed Germany, Switzerland, uh, Hungary, Romania, Croatia, Serbia, Greece, Turkey, a lot of countries, of nice countries. And uh, then I had to, to complain about Iran and Pakistan because I didn't get the, the visa to cross by land. And I, so I arrived in Delhi on the 15th of October 2012. And then I started my journey from in Delhi and I went to Rajasthan, I went to uh, Jaipur, Ajmer, Pushka, uh, Pratapghat, uh, Pratapghat uh, uh, Ratla, Mindor, I've seen the Ajanta, Lorakes, and then I came to Pune, where, where I am now, and uh, I will continue to Goa, then uh, I'll try to go to Pondicherry and Chennai, and then from Chennai to uh, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, China, Korea. I'll take a, a ship to Korea and then a ship to uh, Japan. And then from Japan, I will de definitely take a plane <laughs> to America. Then I'll, my plan is to go from no on the west coast, from north to south America. From the, and then in South America, I'll do a big tour, I think, from Bolivia, Argentina, Brazil. Even though majority of the Indian public uses the bicycle as just a means of transport, there are people who have started to acknowledge the power of the mighty bicycle. With more and more people pursuing cycling as a hearty passion and a serious profession, the future seems bright and green for the city. My name is Sami Makki. I'm the founder of uh, Ride2026, which is a bicycle organization in Pune, India. And this was basically set up to promote the sport of mountain biking and BMX in India uh, way back in the late 90s. So a group of friends came together and found out that this is a very extreme and different sport that does not exist in our country, which is otherwise a cricket crazy nation. And we wanted to go off the regular track and onto the beaten track, get onto the trails and see what mountain biking is. So. Back in 1996, we started mountain biking. Uh, we didn't even know what it was called back then. We just thought we were doing something new and adventurous till we realized that it's actually a sport, an international sport. From then onwards, we took it as a mission to promote and propagate this sport in India. And Pune being our hometown, we started from here. Pune is cycling city. Friendly, cycle friendly. Cycle friendly, I mean, that. Most of the time, you have to cross the cycle or cross the road. So, that is why the third or fourth wheel is not allowed. One of the most important cycles, you have to have judgment. So, that is why cycle is not allowed. It is not allowed. So, that is why the cycle is not allowed. So, that is why the cycle is not allowed. So, that is why the cycle is not allowed. So, that is why the cycle is not allowed. So, that is why the cycle is not allowed. The, the local civic government of Pune, they have uh, set up a lot of cycling tracks, but these tracks are not uh, properly governed or they are not uh, charted out and routed out. They, this needs to be revamped. And uh, Pune, at one point of time, was referred to as a cyclist city in India. And this title has to be brought back to our mm -hmm. city. The only way to do that is for the cyclists to feel safe when they are on the road, because uh, the size of Pune growing rapidly has also put a lot of uh, automobiles on the road which are threat to cyclists. Mm. So these lanes have to be, uh, I feel these lanes have to be governed and charted out and mapped out nicely again and a lot of cyclists can make use of this project. The point is that the cities have, have to, to put lanes and to 
to help people to take yeah. the bicycle because if you take the bicycle and you're in the traffic and with uh, crazy people driving <laughs> you then after uh, at the end of the day you say okay i i quit yeah. bicy- i quit cycling so if the cities uh, help cycling yeah, help, help people to cycle feeling. and cycle take their bicycle everything goes right and yeah. it's it's better for the for the people for the city for everybody Everyone, it's a, yeah. it's really nice so a bicycle is nothing but circles turning circles is the human motor that makes it elegant in fact you uh, don't need to be really a sportsman or something or, or superman to do a war, to a world tour you the you just have to start and when you start it's okay if you're not fit after three weeks you will be fit uh, so <laughs> that's and you get uh, used to everything then uh, so I think everybody can start uh, around the world and do 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 kilometer with a bike. But you have to choose the bike, maybe the good, the good bike and, yeah. and um, the equipment that you take. But then it's quite e- not so difficult. It's quite easy to to cycle.